Yo, what's up guys? In this video, we are going to build this. This is gonna be my laptop area, storage area, storage area, charging station, eventually somewhere. But for now, I needed to get these things in because I have a ton of stuff over here that needs to go in all of these. So here we go. So all these cabinets I actually had already from a job that we made and then it got redesigned and long story short, we didn't use them for that job. So I had the dovetail drawers already. I do not make my own dovetail drawers. I use a local shop um, and she does a really good job. But that's the only thing that I outsource. Anyways, so I had the boxes, I had the drawers. I obviously made all the plywood doors, um, same style as the outfeed table, just trying to give everything a nice, similar, clean look. We put a melamine top on here. I just rounded the edge on this. Maybe I'll add some nosing on it eventually, but also eventually I would like to add over here a, um, a charging station for my drills and chargers. So everything is kind of in this area. And then my main bench area is right here. So this is gonna be kind of the main area of the shop. So I'll take you through and I'll show you how I kind of put this all together and installed it. And yeah, excited to get this loaded up with stuff tomorrow. Most of this stuff here, gonna give it all a place to live, which is gonna be sweet. These are actually the drawers that go in these cabinets. So gonna start moving some of this stuff around and um, yeah, we'll get some cabinets put on the wall. All right, so first off, this is not how I would typically install uppers, but we'll get into that when we do a real kitchen install video. For this, I'm just mounting a cleat on the wall and I'm just gonna rest the cabinets on top, screw them to the wall, just trying to get this done quickly. Um, again, these are just shop cabinets, nothing fancy. And so I mounted this thing, threw a cabinet up there and then realized, uh, I think it's a little too tall, taller than I wanted it to be. So you'll see here in a sec, I end up lowering the cleat down and dropping these down about four inches or so. We do it nice because we do it twice. Again, also working with just everything scattered around and having to look for tools and stuff. I'm just not in my zone here yet, but the shop is certainly coming along and I'm just excited to have have my stuff in order again. So I just screw these, get it screwed to the wall, and then you'll see I get the other cabinets up and I just clamp them together and screw them all together. Not going crazy, making sure they're perfectly plumb or anything. I know they're sitting level and I know the wall wasn't too bad. I did check it for plumb before, but I didn't even bother shimming these boxes out or anything like that. Because again, it's just shop cabinets and I'm trying to just get stuff done quickly in here. Just get stuff knocked out.
All right, so those are up. Now I'm gonna make a few toe kicks for the lower cabinets. And I am absolutely loving this outfit table. It is so nice. Um, way nicer even than what I had set up in my last shop. Just having these saws so close to each other is amazing. Um, if you guys remember in the last shop, I had the regular cabinet saw towards the front and then the slider was towards the back of the shop. So it was like rip a piece, walk to the back, cross cut it. Wasn't the greatest but this has been much better so far. Really, really liking this setup. You can see we still have got wires hanging from the ceiling and stuff like that, but good news. The electrical is almost done at this point on Saturday night. This was earlier in the week, in the week that I made this cabinet, but we are, we've got dust collection almost in. We're gonna do a shop update video next week and walk you through everything we have set up so far. So just breaking down all these pieces for these toe kicks, for the lowers. And this is not typically how I would install lowers either. Everything is kind of being done a little differently, but you'll see when we do some real kitchen install videos, how I, um, how I do things and how I build my cabinets. So it makes install really easy. And I got the wrong size nails. I love that nailer the 18 gauge uh, Milwaukee Brad nailer. The only thing that I don't like about it is the on off button. Cause I always pick it up and go to shoot a nail while I'm holding two pieces together. And I got to put it back down and turn it on. I literally always forget to turn it on. So it's my only thing that's kind of annoying about it. And I'm using Rue glue on this pre-finished plywood so that it sticks that stuff is for like melamine and really like non-porous materials so i'll set these down get them all leveled up shimmed and level and all that and then it's easy just to set the boxes right on top of them you can see i've got these bins just filled with stuff that needs a home and that's what these cabinets are for and I just toe screw these to the floor the nice thing about having the plywood floors, besides the fact that it's better on your body to walk on all day, uh, but mounting stuff to the floor is, yeah, a little bit easier than having concrete floors. So just making sure that these are level with each other and get it all shimmed up, toe screwed down, making sure my opening is good there. I like to use that thing rather than just snapping them off sometimes. Sometimes you snap them and then they, like it slides out and yeah. Prefer to use the multi-tool. Bringing the lowers over. Those carts, I've kept those little dollies for years. They're Harbor Freight ones and they're freaking horrible. I don't know why I still have them because I can't stand them. <laughs> the casters on them are horrible. And trying to get this bench out of the way, one of the wheels, um, one of the casters on that is just shot. Uh, that bench is way too heavy for those, those casters. And I've moved that bench around so much that those things are just, one of them is just, it's just not working at all anymore. 
So just set them on there. They're nice and level and plumb. Making sure they're in line with each other. Then I just screw them down to the toe kick. Just shim it at the wall. The right one was sticking off the wall um, a bit more. And then they just get screwed to the wall. All right, so I got the boxes set. So these cabinets are actually really deep. They are uh, 27. We've got 24 inch deep drawers for these. So I have some pieces of melamine that I've been saving to use for tops on stuff like this. Unfortunately, I don't have anything that uh, wide. So I'm just gonna have a piece back here and then I'll biscuit it together. Uh, Cause I wanna use this stuff up. I don't wanna cut into a brand new sheet of plywood for this. The wall is a little janky here, so I'll rip a small piece for the back and I'll scribe that in and then my front piece will just butt right into that. So to scribe this piece in, I am basically just gonna set it on top here, line it up with my stretchers in the front right here, because I know these are these cabinets are perfectly in line. And then I'll measure over here. I'm an inch off the wall. Down here, I am three quarter off the wall. So I'm gonna set, just gonna use this fast cap scribe. I'm gonna set this thing to We'll go an inch and a quarter, so I'm taking a full cut. And then I'll adjust. Run this along the wall, and that's it. And then I will. So then I'll take this to the table saw and cut it. It's not a straight cut. I'm not gonna show you guys me cutting it because safety police will come out and yell at me. All right, so I got this cut. See how we did. It's pretty good. Now I should have the same distance from here, 24 and three quarter. And I should have the same thing down here, 24 and three quarter, all the way down, perfect. So now my piece here, I wanna overhang about an inch. So I'm gonna rip this to 25 and three quarter. Like I said, the only reason, the only reason I'm doing it like this with a small piece in the back is because I'm just trying to use up some material that I had. Um, otherwise you would do this same thing just with a full piece um, as far as scribing it. But uh, yeah, let me cut the other piece. Yeah, the reason I, I didn't want to show the way I cut that is just because I, I don't want to hear it from people in the comments. I'll probably hear it anyways, but it's something I'm comfortable with. I've been doing it for a long time. I'm careful with it and um, it works. It works for me, but I don't want to teach anybody dangerous habits or things like that so i'm not gonna not gonna show it some of the comments i've been getting already are you know interesting some people were very upset that i threw away all that scrap plywood when i moved out of the other shop um very upset about that 
you know, not something that I was excited about doing either. It's a lot of money that got thrown out basically, but I was in a pinch, needed to move, needed to get rid of all that stuff. So that's what I did. And then just using some regular biscuits to attach these pieces. Bring that over and then shoot the biscuits in the bigger piece. I love that biscuit joiner. That's just a regular classic X, I think it's called, Lamello. Things fantastic. Now, I only glued in the biscuits. I wasn't really looking for a super strong glue joint or anything. I mean, I just figured I'd throw some glue in the biscuit slots, pop this thing together, and then, um, yeah, screw this other piece down, and that's fine. Joint came out pretty good. Good enough for what this is. And then just get this screwed down. I did put a little eighth inch round over on the edge of that melamine. I might put a piece of nosing on it eventually, but probably not, if I'm being honest. That probably will never happen. So these are the 24 inch deep Blum drawer slides. Um, I can't remember the model, but they're a little bit different than the regular 21 inch tandems. They're heavy duty. And the way I mount these, you'll see here in a second, a better angle. I use some pieces of plywood for a spacer. And this is like my standard cabinet drawer stack. You know, you have your uh, six inch drawer front above, and then the two below are like 12 and five eighths, 12 and a quarter. And so I have my spacers. I've been using these spacers for years, um, these same ones. Um, and yeah, I just use a Vix bit, make sure my holes are centered. I keep the drawer slide back an eighth inch from the front of the cabinet because I put bumpers on the back of my drawer fronts and I want the slide to actually be pulling the bumper up against the box. But get these all mounted. And then just throw the clips on the drawers. All my drawer boxes are solid 5 8 maple. Again, I do not make the dovetail drawers. It's the only thing I outsource. I use a local shop. And you can see there with that top drawer, I was actually hitting when I tried to slide it in with the drawer slide all the way back. I had to pull them out and then drop it on because these mount a little different than the regular ones. And then I was just taking some measurements, counting all my gaps for the doors. making a cut list for the doors and the drawer fronts. And then it's over to the table saw to cut all this stuff up. I know I said I was gonna do the miter saw station and that plywood rack first, but, or next after the Alfie table. But after I came in on Monday and I was like, I literally have nowhere to put all this stuff in these bins. So I just got after it and got these cabinets done. And it was a huge help because I literally cleared up almost all that stuff that's just been laying around in the bins. And there's no dust collection or anything hooked up right here. So that's why there's just sawdust flying everywhere.
everything gets a uh, the ground over and then for mounting these because they're just shop cabinets i'm just nailing these suckers right to the front and then i'll pull the drawers out and they get screwed in from the inside but this is obviously not how i would typically install a drawer front that's painted or stained um, i would not be putting nails in the face so when we get into that on our next kitchen build we have coming up i'll do a detailed um, explanation on how i I installed your reference. And then back to drilling holes with this Craig jig and this thing works good. It does. But once you're used to having a hinge boring machine, man, it's so much faster, so much easier. You could see, I even gave up on using the clamps because I was just getting, um, kind of annoyed with it. And I had to use some of the hinges I had to use are like old screw on. Some of them didn't even have the soft clothes on them, which I don't even know where they came from. But um, yeah, because not having my hinge boring machine, I couldn't do the three holes. I could have done it, I know, and drilled the holes by hand, but I didn't. I just found some stuff that I had, some old overlay hinges, and used those and just screwed them on. Again, everything gets round over. And the reason I went with this look with the just the hole for the pulls is because, especially on the lowers, um, I didn't want any pulls that are sticking out that anything could get caught on when you're walking by or pushing a cart by or anything like that. Um, just a smoother, cleaner look. And so I wanna try and keep it consistent throughout the space. And just getting these doors hung. And we are almost ready to fill up these cabinets. And then I was just measuring for the holes in the drawer fronts here, doing the same thing, getting that centered. These ones I figured I'd put towards the top a little bit. And then I just took that Forstner bit and drilled right through. I uh, did a pilot hole and went right through. I'm not super worried about any little bit of tear out on the inside again guys these are shop cabinets um you know nothing super fancy just trying to get these done quick because i need to get to upcoming projects And that is it for this video, guys. Hope you enjoyed it. Be sure to like, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff. And we will see you in the next one.